Okay, let's talk to Frank uh, in Illinois. He's got some questions about our previous uh, religious uh, history, I think. Um, I'll just let Frank elaborate. Frank, what, what do you want to talk to us about today? Uh, hello, I was just, uh, I'm an atheist, and I was uh, raised Roman Catholic, and I know you said you were too, and the other host said that he was raised Christian, but knows quite a bit about um, Muslim uh, religion. I was kind of mm -hmm. wanting to know um, the, the history on, let's just say, Muslim and Christian is pretty much the same from what I understand. They they both worship the same ultimate God. Isn't that true? Adam, go ahead. I've been talking too much this episode. <laughs> they they both claim that they worship the same God, yes. Yeah, and uh, after that point, it goes extremely in opposite directions. But they, you know, uh, even even say Hebrew would would they they I guess they would all three be the, the Abrahamic religion. I guess is the way it could be described. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, people will say that uh, you worship or you're part of one of the three big Abrahamic religions, right? Those three are, I think, thought to be worshiping the same God. Okay, let's start with um, Christianity and, 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 you know, go right by the Bible, Genesis, you know, made Adam and Eve and, and so forth, and then get up to the Great Flood where the only people that were left was Noah's family, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's at some okay. point, yeah. So what, like eight or 12 people, something like that? Right, okay. So from that point, they go out and multiply, and we become, you know, there's, it, it pops start to populate the world. But I guess my question is, if they all started, if everybody started from one family, um, where incest? The, Correct. Well, I'm not. I'm not even talking about that. I know you, it would have to be, especially from the beginning with Adam and Eve. But, but let's not even worry about that. Let's just worry about they've populated the earth. Now, okay. uh, there's been many generations go on. Where in the Bible does uh, in, in the Christian Bible does it say how? there are enemies of God and the families of Noah. Does anybody know where that distinction comes? Because I don't even know where the Philistines came in. For some reason, the Israelites hated the Philistines, and and I don't even know how they came to be if they were all from the same family. Does that, does that question make sense to you? Uh, I'm in over my head, Adam. What do you think? <sighs> Um, I, from what I read and, uh, studied, um, now Noah had three sons. Um, I don't know their names in English, but in, in Hebrew and in Arabic, they're Sam, Ham, and Yepheth. And one went and became, well, according to the biblical story, um, populated, um, Asia and Asia Minor, which then became the Persian and the further East. Uh, one went up north and populated near Europe and north of the Arabian Peninsula, so Turkey, Syria, and this area, and one went left and populated, I think, North Africa. Um, and they populated so much and became very distinctive nations that at some point you will see the rise of the Palestinians or the rise of different nations that they came from these Apparently, according to the Bible, all nations are cousins at the end of the day, but they became leagues and they became fighting leagues. And that's how you find later in the story, the Palestinians came as the enemy of God and the uh, struggle between the Palestinians and the Israelis and so forth. Does that answer your question, Frank? Yeah, that gives me a, a much better understanding of it. Um, and I, under I understand, isn't it, isn't it, um, was it Isaac that had two sons or, or Isaac and one, one became Hebrew and the other one became, um, 
what is now considered is Arabic. Ishmael. Is, is that Ishmael? Yes. So that's according to the three religions um, that Isaac is the father of all Jews, uh, father of Israel, the Israelites, and then Ishmael uh, became the father of the Arabs. Uh, however, from a scientific point of view, um, genealogy and, sorry, uh, genetics and uh, historical analysis, sociology, um, it is actually debatable that Ishmael not necessarily the father of Arabs. Again, there are two sides of the story here. It depends what you want to uh, investigate. But again, yeah, it depends if you're asking a, a scientific question or a uh, or like an in canon question. <laughs> well, I um, I guess I get confused how um, how how there that God can and can look down. If we're all his children, can look down and say, I, "I don't, I can't quote the verse," but where he's talking about going and killing the Philistines, their wives, their unborn, putting a, a sword through the mother's belly. I mean, why, why would a God who considered considered us all his children be willing to do that? I mean, how could that? The whole nation be so evil that an innocent child is be he would be willing to put to death because he was told what he or she was told whatever their parents taught him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean you're asking, the, that you're asking the, the right questions to the wrong people, right? Because uh, I think we agree with you. Uh, yeah. You need to call into the the theist experience or or something like that belief wanted maybe um uh yeah i mean like uh, what do you want to say frank we agree with you we think it's absolutely crazy that people make any dis uh, or all right i won't speak for adam i think it's absolutely crazy that anyone would make real life decisions of any kind on what some people told them because they read it in a book or because their parents told them and their parents told them and their parents told them like all, all of these. Uh, I think to me, that's part of this whole like deconstruction experience is realizing how you get your information and what you do with the information uh, that you get and how you process it and how you make decisions about life. And, uh, and I can't condone like, this is one of the reasons why I don't like, you know, tradition, air quotes. It's because I feel like it's too much uh, of doing things for reasons that are unknown or obscure or not particularly good. Uh, what, what do you think, Adam? I can give you the most reasonable apologetic response that I heard about <laughs> this. <laughs> but this will become belief wanted. Um, so in, <laughs> One of the debates that I had with a pastor, he goes, um, well, of course, God did not command all these killings and, and massacre. That, that's, these were the people uh, at the time, um, those people in the Bible, they were going through wars as two nations into, in, in the primitive times. They, they, it was brutal wars and they killed all these people. And because they won the war, they thought that God helped him and it was a command from God. But don't forget that the Bible was written by people and that's their worldly view. It doesn't mean that actually God commanded these killings, which I think from, from an atheist or agnostic perspective, I will, I agree with that. Uh, whether I believe in the Bible or not, we can both conclude in this instance that it wasn't, God, or that there was no deity whatsoever commanded those killings. It was a human behavior. Right. So if that right. is your response as a believer, then okay, I, I will agree with you on that instance. And that was the end of the conversation with, with that pastor. Um, so I guess what we can both agree on as believers and non-believers that God did not command any of these killings. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, um, so I guess the believers would say that this was like a lie or a misinterpretation or something like that. And we would say, well, 
the whole story is potentially questionable and you know so yeah what, what do you think frank yeah i i appreciate you taking the time to, uh, for my call because i think i think you're dead on i you know it would be more appropriate to call a uh, another type of show, but I guess I just wanted your opinion on how to handle uh, a debate with somebody like that. And he just gave me um, an example of that, which I thought is pretty good. You know, I mean, that, yeah. that's exactly how I feel about all religions that God was made in our image and they put human characteristics on that God, like, for instance, for, you know, for he was a jealous God and he would have no uh, false gods before him. I mean, what God, is, if he's truly a God, is going to be jealous. You know, I mean, that's a human characteristic put on an imaginary being by humans. You know, but, yeah, you would think but that I, if you were the creator of the universe, you'd have a little more like security in yourself, you know, <laughs> a little more yeah, self-assured yeah. or something like that. Yeah, you know, uh, supposedly he says the greatest gift he has given us humans is the gift of life. And then what's he do? He wipes it all out with a flood, you know, according to this book. But uh, anyway, yeah. I just, yeah, I, I, I just uh, kind of wanted to uh, have my um, um, notions heard and, and and give me a, your opinions of how, how you handle the base and stuff. And I won't take up any more of your time, but I, I just, I just, uh, it's been something that's been, you know, uh, in the back of my mind, trying to, trying to figure out rationally, but there's no real way to do that. So, but anyway, I do, I do appreciate you taking the time for my call and, um, I'll let you move on to the next one. All right. Thanks very much, Frank. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, if someone came out to me and like, presented me with this problem i can i've i've spoken to uh believers who say yeah god commanded that who, who will agree that god commanded it right and they'll say yeah but it's because you know they were heathens they and therefore they don't deserve to die so or so they don't deserve to live so they really go hard on the fact that like because these people were enemies of god that they therefore deserve death or you know, That's they, the they don't have the same. Right. And, and it's really surprising, right? So maybe it's effective in that, in that, um, in that regard, because they just sort of say, yep, it says that. And, uh, and I believe that. And I think it's right because God is the boss. And uh, if God said it, then I think it's the right thing to do. And they just like find a way to make it make sense in their heads and sort of in so doing throw away their own, their own sort of um, moral compass, I would say. But um, yeah, but I, I, I mean, uh, go go ahead, Adam. Go when when I uh, when I go through these debates, um, my argument would be, and I'm not sure if Frank is still listening, um, but yeah, there, there is also the other element where the killings were not commanded by God. So if we agree that these were people just going into brutal wars, and that was their interpretation. How do you then interpret events where the, the, the plagues, where God himself mm -hmm. uh, goes into killing the firstborn of all Egyptians or uh, or the flood or all the other things that God or, or so Sodom and Gomorrah. More direct. God, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so now it's actually God himself taking lives and killing people brutally. Um, so, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I saw. Questionable. Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw a, a fun infographic uh, that I did not fact check, but it compared the number of people that God kills in the Bible to the number of people that the devil kills in the Bible, and uh, God has killed ma orders of magnitude more people than the devil Far has much. killed in the Bible in his own book that says he's great. So, anyway. 